So I will record this session. Right. So in electromagnetism, we will be talking mainly about the fundamental like concepts required in vector calculus that is related to electromagnetism. And then uh, we'll be learning about uh, the Maxwell's equations that describe uh, the uh, wave propagation uh, of electromagnetic waves. And then um, how the electric and magnetic fields behave in that uh, wave propagation and what kind of parameters affect the electromagnetic wave and uh, how we can efficiently transmit electromagnetic waves from one point to another point, right? So uh, for example, in telecommunications, we require uh, these concepts, uh, I mean, highly, uh, because we require, we require transmission of waves from one point to another, uh, I mean, with less attenuation and uh, with uh, low latency. Right, so in order for us to uh, send our data very efficiently from one end to another end, we need to maintain the characteristic of the electromagnetic wave. Right, so in order to do that, we need to understand how we can, uh, you know, like uh, build systems that will have minimum loss and have uh, maximum uh, energy or power transfer to the uh, the loads that are connected to our system, right? So electromagnetic wave uh, propagation uh, is, is the fundamental understanding that we require to build systems that can deliver power efficiently to different loads that are connected to the, uh, uh, for example, the transmission lines that deliver power to the loads, right? So we will be talking about uh, how we can match loads to a certain transmission line and uh, how we can, uh, you know, determine parameters of the system and uh, analyze the performance of the system and say whether the per performance of the system is good or bad in terms of the uh, power transfer to the load and so on, right? So we can actually consider this scenario for not only for telecommunication, but for power systems as well and for other like, uh, domains as well right uh, so i will be actually talking uh, more about microwave communications and antenna and wave propagations as well which are the uh, consequent uh, modules of this uh, course uh, however we, we will actually uh, talk about power systems in some cases also uh, where we see the electromagnetic wave propagation and uh, so thirdly, we will be talking about the transmission lines and waveguides. So transmission lines help us to transfer energy from one point to another point in a uh, transmission, I mean, in a circuit, right? So once we give some power supply to a certain transmission line, we will be able to transfer power from, uh, from point A to point B. And uh, we want to give some power to a certain load that is connected to the end of the transmission line. So in that case, we want to uh, maximize the energy transfer of the system. And uh, therefore we need to determine the parameters of the system in terms of uh, the material that we use and uh, the dielectric material we use and so on. And then uh, we will be talking about electromagnetic radiation, dipole antenna and so on. So electromagnetic radiation uh, uh, can uh, affect the uh, you know performance of the uh, antennas and uh, the dipole antenna, which is designed uh, to uh, achieve certain, uh, certain uh, performances in terms of radiation, uh, directivity and uh, energy efficiency and so on will be discussed. So if you have any questions, please ask, right? You can put in the chat also if you like. So all the details regarding the uh, module outline and the syllabus of the module is given in LMS. So you can go through each of the titles that I will be covering and you can uh, follow up the lessons. So some of the titles that I will be covering under one topic might not be covered under that topic. We, I might cover it in another topic. The reason is sometimes uh, since I don't have like, for example, uh, time to cover the mathematical concepts, which are purely mathematical, I 
directly applied into the place where it is applied. I mean, if I'm going to be talking about the, for example, uh, some theorems related to uh, divergence and a curl, for example, I mean, such kind of, I mean, such kind of theorems that are already in, in the available in the mathematics domain. I will be talking about those, uh, I mean, divergence theorem and Stokes theorem, Green's theorem in the uh, other sections. So anyway, I will be covering all, most all the titles and I will be, if I'm, uh, if I'm not having enough time to cover the entire title, I will give you some introduction to the title and I will ask you to refer more about that title when, once you have time and once you uh, are completing a certain assignment. So, uh, so the successful uh, completion of this module will uh, will give you the basis for understanding other modules that are uh, done uh, under microwave engineering, radar systems, antennas, fiber optics, and so on. Uh, so uh, let's first understand the meaning of the word electromagnetism. So uh, the electromagnetism word right, is composed of two uh, terms, right? Electric and magnetism, right? So therefore, we'll be... Uh, talking about electric and magnetic fields, right? So electric and magnetic fields are the basis uh, of this electromagnetism uh, and uh, the interaction that is between those two fields is discussed in electromagnetism, right? So electromagnetism is a study of how electric and magnetic fields work together to form a, an electromagnetic wave, which will propagate from one location to another location. Right? So I hope it will be clear to you. Right? So uh, by the interaction between the electric and magnetic field, uh, a wave is generated and that wave is able to travel from one point to another. Right? So because of this phenomenon, we are able to send data uh, wirelessly from one point to another, right? Once we design our electric and magnetic fields, once we actually generate electric and magnetic fields in such a way that our attenuation of our wave is less and we can reliably send our data from uh, some a certain source destination to a like a end destination, uh, then we can actually transfer reliable data from one point to another, right? So. So in here, we'll be talking different parameters about wave propagation and how we can successfully send data from or send waves from one point to another, right? So electric field and magnetic fields are the main components of electromagnetism and uh, they will be discussed and uh, the interaction of those fields will be discussed, right? So... Uh, next, I would also like to mention that uh, electric field, right? Electric field uh, related to voltage, right? So the voltage that we can, uh, that we supply between two conductors, right? The ground plane and the top conductor will create a voltage, right? So the voltage will create an electric field, right? So the electric field, is uh, re more related to voltage and once there's voltage we can create an electric field and uh, due to the electric field right we can create current right so current that will move from one location to another and uh, that current will uh, generate magnetic field right so uh, once we take an example let's take an example so uh, once we consider a dipole antenna the dipole antenna uh, is provided with a varying current. Okay, so the varying current produces the uh, magnetic field around the antenna and the magnetic field that is generated causes, uh, I mean, an electric field to be generated. And uh, by the chain event of generating electric and magnetic fields, uh, a propagating wave is generated. So, uh, right, so uh, we need uh, like a varying current in, in this dipole antenna to uh, generate a magnetic field. And with the magnetic field, a 
an electric field is generated and from the electric field a magnetic field is generated and so on so the chain reaction will go on and the wave will propagate uh, along the space right so right a magnetic field will be created once the current is varying uh, along the uh, dipole antenna and uh, once we uh, once we consider the magnetic field once we consider one point in the magnetic field, we can draw the electric field that is generated in that, uh, with that, in, around that location, right? So uh, with the presence of electric field, a magnetic field is generated. Right, with the magnetic field that is generated, another electric field is generated, and so on. Uh, this is going on like a chain. And then once all the sum of the uh, effect of the these electric ma and magnetic fields is taken, uh, the a wave is generated uh, with the help of the electric and magnetic fields that are generated. And a wave is formed, uh, which will propagate from one location to another location. So we will be talking about antennas and we will be talking about different types of antennas so, and uh, the transmission lines and how they are applied and so on. So most of the time I would like to take some examples from the existing uh, like uh, scenarios where we use electromagnetic waves. So this is microwave microstrip antenna, uh, like microstrip antenna array. Right, we have uh, multiple antennas which are connected to the feeding point, feeding line in here, which will uh, generate uh, the necessary electric field and then will enable the generation of magnetic field and thereby generate a traveling electromagnetic wave. And that wave will be radiated along the perpendicular direction of the microstrip antenna. Right, so this is a microstrip antenna. So these uh, antennas are available in digital circuits and phones and so on and uh, highly used in like situations where we require small antenna circuits very small antenna circuits right these do, these do not take much space and uh, they will be used in uh, uh, appliances where we require very small size antennas and so on so in phones, we get this and much more advanced versions of these antennas we get in phones. And therefore, in all of our most of our applications, we have antennas and we have such kind of communication modules, right? So all these things, once we check carefully, we might we will be able to see some, uh, you know, PCB based antenna systems installed and then uh, used uh, to transfer uh, waves wirelessly from one point to another. So these kind of uh, applications are the uh, main, I mean, importance of electromagnetism. So we can actually uh, uh, look into those applications later as well. So I will be covering uh, theories and application uh, data related to transmission lines and antennas in the third and fourth, uh, you know, units of this uh, course, right? Right, so, uh, next, we need to uh, learn about what a field is, right? A field is a region where a certain physical quantity is defined with respect to uh, space and time, right? So in this case, what we mean is that uh, we have a certain physical quantity, right? Uh, for example, uh, a certain, uh, I mean, a parameter, like, for example, temperature, right a uh, force right some kind of force right that is available in a certain region of space right uh, so if we have temperature for example the value of temperature can uh, can can be uh, uh, i mean taking different magnitudes right but uh, they will be available in all uh, regions or all points in that region, right? So in a certain region, if we can define a certain parameter that will uh, that will be varying with the time and with the position, we call that a region 
uh, a field, right? So in, in these kind of fields, we can have either uh, vectors or scalars, right? So if we have scaling scalars, that means scalars means uh, parameters that only have a magnitude, right? So uh, the parameters which only have uh, magnitude, we call as scalar. And those uh, scalar parameters, if they are uh, spread over a certain region and every point of the region has a certain magnitude uh, of that parameter, then we call that region a, a scalar field. And then similarly, we can do the same thing for vectors and every point in the space has a certain vector, right? So we can define that a certain like vector is there at each point of the field. So if there's a, a force on each point in the space, we call that uh, it is a vector field, right? Uh, so at each point in that field, uh, the, there's a like a parameter which has both a direction and a magnitude, right? So in that case, we call that a vector field because each point can be defined using a vector which has both a magnitude and a direction. Right, so uh, those are the definitions of a scalar and vector fields. Right, some examples for scalar fields are temperature, humidity, pressure, and so on. So, right, so these parameters, temperature that we measure, do not have a direction. Right, we can't say temperature is in a certain direction. Right, uh, the humidity, pressure, and so on, they don't have a direction. They have a magnitude. Right, they have a magnitude at each position in the atmosphere, for example. Right, and then uh, in the when we take the vector field, we can take electric and magnetic fields as examples for vector fields. Right, so the electric field uh, has uh, both uh, a, a direction and a magnitude at each point in the space. Right, so when there's some electric field in some kind of a region, when there's some electric field that is in some kind of region, then the uh, the electric field will um, will be defined for each point in the space, and uh, the electric field will be defined using uh, vectors. Right, so the value of electric field, its magnitude, will vary at each point of the region based on the uh, effect of uh, the uh, charges available in the region and voltage applied to the surface and so on. So based on the different uh, environmental conditions and input conditions, the value of electric field will change uh, and its direction will change at each point of the region. However, each point of the region will have a certain electric field uh, at that point, right? So electric field, regarding electric field, we will learn more in this class, in the upcoming lectures. So uh, once we talk about the uh, difference between the uh, circuit theory and the electromagnetic theory, uh, in circuit theory, we will uh, be dealing mostly with electrical circuits that contain resistors, capacitors, inductors, and so on, right? So we, we are considering circuits like this, which are connected to certain loads and uh, which are having certain, you know, capacitors, inductors, and so on, right? So in that case, actually, uh, the waves are traveling in, in low frequencies, the wave that is supplied to this circuit is traveling in low frequencies and therefore the value of the voltage, right? The value of the voltage and value of the current uh, around, I mean, uh, value of the current and value of the voltage will not vary much uh, at each point of the uh, circuit, right? However, uh, it is not applicable for situations where we have high frequency uh, voltage power supplies 
and uh, in in high frequencies we cannot actually use the uh, conventional uh, circuit theory to understand or evaluate these systems right so systems will behave differently under uh, high frequency signal inputs and then uh, once we talk about the electromagnetic theory it will talk about electric and magnetic fields and how electric and magnetic fields uh, are uh, generated and how they will affect the uh, behavior of a certain uh, circuit uh, operation and uh, so on. So uh, electric and magnetic uh, fields, uh, I mean, cause the voltages and currents in circuits to behave in a certain manner. And uh, that can be explained by using electric and magnetic fields. Uh, so anyway, uh, the electromagnetic theory is applicable for any kind of a frequency. Particularly, it is useful in high frequencies, right? It is particularly used when explaining about high frequency circuit circuits, right? And then uh, we will be able to see the effect of uh, the high high frequency signal wave propagation uh, once we uh, use high I mean once we use the electromagnetic theory we will be ex able to explain the behavior that is shown by the circuits that use high frequencies right if we just use the circuit theory we will not be able to explain the output that we get in uh, these high frequency circuits right so therefore we uh, anyway once we are using electromagnetic theory we can actually explain any kind of a phenomena that is happening in circuits and in high frequency circuits and low frequency circuits uh, and uh, we will be able to understand the systems really well so therefore electromagnetism and the theory related to electromagnetism is useful for us to understand the overall i i mean uh, the overall behavior of circuits and uh, other kind of like high frequency circuits right so let's talk a little bit about the history of electromagnetism so uh, first actually when we talk about uh, the uh, electromagnetism so electric field and magnetic field were not that much, you know, like uh, uh, investigated by the time that first uh, the Coulomb law was first introduced, right? So I hope that you have uh, studied the Coulomb's law in your previous, like, uh, edu I mean, during your advanced level or during previous modules, right? So I think maybe you must have learned or you must have heard about Coulomb and Coulomb's law, right? So anyway, he actually identified the electric field and how the electric charges occur, I mean, and how they generate electric field and how electric flux is generated in uh, in an, in uh, objects and so on. So uh, the electric field and the concepts related to them were first identified by this scientist Coulomb, right? And then Ampere's law. So Ampere's law is regarding current, right? So varying, uh, varying current values and how they uh, affect in generating magnetic fields and, and so on, right? So they actually, uh, so the Ampere's law states something about current and how current is uh, behaving in a circuit and how it will enhance the production of magnetic field and so on. So then we, but then we have the Gauss's law, right? Gauss's law is useful for us to understand how the, uh, the electric field and magnetic fields are, uh, you know, like diverging or behaving inside closed systems and how electric and magnetic fields are uh, spreaded in the uh, space and so on. And then uh, we have Faraday's law, right? Faraday's law are, uh, are helpful for us to understand about how we can uh, generate magnetic field from, uh, uh, from current and from current how we can generate uh, a magnetic field and vice versa, right? So. Uh, anyway, we will go through each of these like laws in the upcoming lectures and we will be able to understand uh, more about the concepts that uh, 
that were discussed or introduced by uh, these uh, popular scientists and how they enable us to understand uh, the uh, electromagnetic wave concept right so anyway the, the there are these kind of uh, these scientists were able to understand and investigate deeper about electromagnetism and waves of electromagnetism however there was one big problem which is that uh, there was no scientist who told uh, about how the electric and magnetic fields interact with each other right so not much scientists actually uh, got the idea that electric and magnetic fields can work together and uh, also explain most of the uh, i mean uh, phenomenon in the world right so i mean in the world electric and magnetic fields work hand in hand and they are able to create a uh, wave waves and uh, you know like na natural uh, like uh, uh, I mean, natural, uh, they're able to create electromagnetic based, you know, like equipments and so on. Right. So anyway, so in order for us to understand how electric and magnetic fields are behaving and interacting with uh, each of them, uh, the ja James Maxwell scientists uh, combined all the relevant laws that were previously proposed and introduced uh, like Maxwell's equations in the 19th century. Right? So uh, the Maxwell's equations are basically of four types. Right? We will be learning about that in the upcoming lectures. So we will be studying about that. So the Maxwell's equations are basically two, four equations. However, earlier in the history, it is said that Maxwell introduced about more than four equations. So I think about 10 equations. And out of them, actually, some were having redundancy. So therefore, uh, finally, uh, the, the, these four equations, I mean, ma mainly four equations were introduced as, I mean, were named as Maxwell's laws. So those four equations were able to, uh, uh, like, uh, discover or were able to, like, uh, logically explain the behavior of certain systems, right, which use electromagnetic wave propagation. And then uh, also the electromagnetic theory was first born and uh, after some time only the circuit theory was born. So the first first, first theory which was discovered was electric uh, uh, electromagnetic theory and the second, uh, second uh, theory which was introduced, I mean circuit theory was introduced after uh, electromagnetic theory. Right, so Therefore, circuit theory is much more newer than electromagnetic theory. That means that electromagnetic theory was able to even explain the uh, behavior of the current, right? So, therefore, um, there was uh, so the electromagnetic theory formed the basis for uh, for explaining uh, events both in the high frequency and low frequency domain, right? So, under the history context, I will go further. And I will explain to you like how these scientists actually exp uh, discovered the waves and uh, experimented the, those waves and uh, named those waves into, under certain category, right? So this first actually James Maxwell introduced the Maxwell's equations and he mathematically uh, said that these equations govern the electromagnetic waves. And uh, at that time, actually, a German scientist known as Heinrich Hertz was able to, uh, uh, I mean, experimentally work out the electromagnetic waves and theories presented by James Maxwell and found that there actually was uh, some electromagnetic waves that are produced, right? So uh, by following the Maxwell's equations, right? So uh, Henry Hertz showed that the Maxwell's equations were accurate by practical experiments. And after those discoveries, I mean, after that point uh, in, in, uh, in a large scale, a lot of people uh, tried to investigate the rest of the electromagnetic wave uh, spectrum. And then uh, a person called Conrad was able to discover ultraviolet rays. And person called another time Conrad discovered the X-rays. Right, and then Paul Ulrich Willard was able to discover German rays, 
right so sorry gamma rays right sorry gamma rays and uh, therefore uh, uh, so different types of rays were uh, identified and discovered by these scientists right so the scientists were able to discover different types of electromagnetic waves right so there are uh, multiple electromagnetic waves that are in use and uh, depending on the application of those waves those waves are aimed right so the waves can have different frequencies and wavelengths and uh, based on the wavelengths uh, the wavelength and the application these waves are named right so under the uh, uh, the frequency of uh, i mean under the frequency uh, of uh, basically like kilohertz and megahertz we have these radio waves right and then we have once we go to the microwaves we we are going to the gigahertz region right and above that we have infrared radiation and above that we have visible light uh, ultraviolet rays x rays gamma rays and so on so uh, once we go to the x axis we, we are actually having lower wavelengths uh, and uh, in the meantime we have a higher frequency right so these uh, waves are harmful to our i mean skin and to our health so we need to be careful when we are working with them right and all these waves we can actually uh, we can actually uh, use the equation c equals f lambda where the c is the speed of light right speed of light and uh, uh, lambda is the wavelength of the wave and the frequency can be found using the this equation right so uh, anyway if we don't know the wavelength we can find using this equation once we know the frequency right and so on so we can use c equals f lambda to find the wavelength or frequency of a wave right so you i think know already about the different parameters of a wave right so a wave will have a certain amplitude right so it will uh, the distance or displacement from the uh, baseline the, from the base uh, line up to the point where we have uh, the maximum uh, peak maximum amplitude or maximum displacement we call as amplitude right and then uh, the wavelength we define as the uh, distance between equal amplitude points right uh, i mean uh, the uh, the distance between two consecutive peaks or troughs we call as uh, the wavelength right so uh, so the peaks that we consider which have the same amplitude must be consecutive peaks right and must be in a certain uh, like uh, a certain direction right so right these two points once we take we can call the, the this as the wavelength right so and then we can take this point and this point and we can call this as the wavelength right so the two points two consecutive points we show the same amplitude in the same direction we call as the wavelength right so likewise uh, we can define wavelength, frequency, and uh, amplitude, and so on for an uh, for a wave, right? So frequency is known as the number of cycles that pass a point per second, right? So how many cycles will pass a certain point in the in a second? We call as the frequency. So if the frequency is high, the number of cycles that will pass that point will be high high very high right if it is very low then the number of cycles that pass one point uh, and will be low right so actually once we talk about the applications of the different electromagnetic waves we have different uh, applications and uh, we have uh, we have uh, different electromagnetic wave types such as radio microwave infrared visible light ultraviolet x-rays gamma rays and so on and for each of these waves we have multiple applications uh, which 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 are used to uh, for different uh, activities so uh, these things you don't have to memorize and right? you just need to know like they are very important
uh, and it's very important to understand about these electromagnetic waves, right? So, right. So once we take uh, to into consideration the communications, right? The communications, the wireless communications, we'll have uh, the electromagnetic wave propagation and uh, the uh, uh, the cell phones and radios use these wireless communications. They use electromagnetic waves. And then uh, we have wired communications also, right? Wired communications, for example, fiber optics, telephone networks, they use electromagnetic wave principles to uh, transmit uh, waves from one point to another, right? And the worldwide optical fiber network, right? Which is, is also uh, using wave propagation in fiber networks and then we have total internal reflection happening inside the optical fiber which allows the wave to travel like without attenuating much inside the uh, optical fiber right so the same at uh, same amplitude will be maintained throughout the uh, optical fiber right once we uh, send a wave through that right so uh, these optical fibers are essential for us to have internet and uh, exchange information from one point to another, right? So without these optical fiber networks, we won't be having internet and therefore we will be facing a lot of uh, problems. And uh, we can also actually consider that our earth is also an electromagnet, right? So it is actually uh, uh, having electromagnetic forces all over uh, the earth. And uh, because of this electromagnetic force that is available in the earth, we actually have all the like, uh, I mean, processes happening in a uh, certain manner such that uh, the uh, behavior of the uh, objects and uh, the, the, the op I mean, the objects are made of atoms, right? So atoms are composed of electromagnetic forces, right? So uh, for an atom to have electrons and protons behaving and orbiting uh, in certain, uh, in certain uh, I mean, ways, electromagnetic force is required. So anyway, we'll be talking about this electromagnetic force further. And uh, therefore, uh, this uh, Earth is considered as electromagnet, right? So I think you can actually watch that video maybe later, right, as well, right? So I think I will not share this video right now. I have shared this in the LMS. So I hope you will go through this as well, which will give you an understanding about how electromagnetism is uh, like creating the world uh, in nature, right? By nature, electromagnetic force is uh, used to create objects uh, as it is and uh, in certain manner such that we don't feel that this is, uh, this is uh, uh, like a hollow, right? So actually, I think the video will explain it as well, uh, very well. So you can refer that. Uh, so apart from uh, the uh, applications, we also have different medium through which we transport electromagnetic waves. So we have guided media, right? So something like uh, something, we have some media to guide the wave that is propagating, right? So we can have waveguides, right? To transfer high frequency signals from one point to another point. So these are used in like... Uh, telecommunication towers and once we are transmitting high frequency signals from one point to another point and then we have a PCB like uh, transmission lines right so in, in PCB circuits we have all these small transmission lines going from one 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 point to another point in a, uh, for example this IC to another IC and once it is transformed from a transmitting uh, I mean once it is connected like this from one IC to another IC this small conducting wire with its with the uh, I mean with the ground plane can transmit uh, electromagnetic waves uh, from one point to another point and in that case we will be used uh, micro strip mission lines to transfer the energy uh, of the wave and uh, we have wireless media so in wireless media we can uh, send wireless signals from one point to another point 
using uh, base stations, uh, satellite uh, tower, satellite dishes, and so on. So we and radar systems, right? In radar systems, also we are using uh, electromagnetic waves, and uh, we are using concepts related in order to uh, achieve some tasks. So in navigation, we will be using radar systems and GPS systems, RSS that is localization as well, right? So we have, uh, so in radar systems, we have electromagnetic waves and concepts related to that. So uh, we will be understanding, uh, identifying uh, an object which is far away from our location by sending uh, like electromagnetic wave to the distance and the object once it hits, uh, once it uh, get hit with this electromagnetic wave will uh, reflect part of the electromagnetic wave to the, towards the sender and uh, by taking account the time delay for the transmission to happen, the distance between the radar system and the object will be uh, calculated using concepts such as time of arrival and so on. Uh, so uh, then we have G systems, which will also work uh, using satellite communication, right? So satellite communication also uses electromagnetic waves, right? And then we have RSSI based localization. So RSSI means receive signal strength indication, right? So the RSSI parameter is used to find the, the signal strengths of a certain signal that we receive, right? So by using the RSSI parameter, we can, dis uh, I mean, make the distance from a one node to another node. So by doing that, by estimating the distance, we can also uh, use that to find our own location using that data that is available. So once we find our own location, we call that, I mean, once we find a location of a certain node, we call that localization finding the position of a node we call as localization, right? So for localization, we can use RSSI-based localizations. There are other types of localization as well. However, RSSI-based localization is a simple localization method which can be explained using our electromagnetic waves. Uh, next, when we talk about the power systems, uh, we can talk about generation, distribution, and transmission. Right? Uh, in each phase, we might use a high frequency voltage power transmission. In that case, we require uh, we require like uh, the electromagnetic wave theory to uh, uh, plan our transmission of our uh, signals from one end to another end. Right. So because the uh, signals that we uh, supply to the uh, to the uh, to our like generation and uh, distribution and transmission uh, like plants and equipments, uh, the the those equipments must be able to propagate those waves very reliably from one one end to another end without losing much energy. So for that, we need to understand electromagnetism and theories related to that. And then we have uh, transformers and electric motors, which also use electric. Uh, electromagnetism principles and then we have medical treatments which are highly using uh, for example x-rays uh, and gamma rays uh, ultraviolet rays and so on so these uh, waves are used for different medical applications and uh, like get really good uh, understanding about the medical situation of a person and then once we talk about the reference book, we have a reference book, which is known as Engineering Electromagnetics. Magnetics. This uh, book is used for understanding the theories that will be covered in the lecture. You can go through this book and you can uh, refer if you want more details about a certain uh, title that we will be covering in this lecture. So I would like you to refer this book. This is already uploaded in the LMS. You can obtain that so that is all for the first lecture so i would like to uh, stop from here so if you like you can ask some questions right so do you have any questions regarding today's lecture do you have any questions if you don't have any questions regarding content do you have any questions regarding the lectures and the other like uh, possible ways of implementing assignments, quizzes, and so on. Do you have any questions related to that?
if you have any questions you can let me